Hello everyone. Today we're gonna talk about gun chart and how to define a custom KPI with type gun for Ribofish. But first, we'll quickly touch the history of the question to have the common understanding of what is a gun chart. These days, gun charts are almost completely taken over by the project planning guys and they create those weird charts. Uh, but originally, gun chart became popular about a hundred years ago, named after Henry Gunt who used them to represent routine or repeated operations in manufacturing. And such charts help to visualize schedules of such operations and make it very easy to understand the layout of operations and literally see the equipment usage and optimization potential. So let's say in our example, we plan to produce some imaginary items. On horizontal axis, we have time and on the vertical axis, we will have the equipment or operations. It is usually the equipment because it is a limited resource, so we need to plan or document its usage. For this case, we will use operations because it will be easier to understand. To produce each item, four operations need to be executed. First cut, then we need to shape this, then polish, and finally paint. Those to be done sequentially for each item. So we can start from the first one. And you can see that we are doing cut. It starts around one sharp and it takes about 10 minutes. And then we are ready to start the same operation for the second item. It takes about the same amount of time. And then we continue this pattern until we have five cut operations for each of our five items. Now we can start with the shape operation. You can immediately see that it takes a bit more time. And there was a little gap before we start. And then we repeat this operation five times until all of our five items shaped. And after that, we can start the third operation, which is polish. But actually, if we are talking about the sequential operations, it is also possible to start this first execution of the polish operation much earlier and do those in parallel. And on the gun chart, it is very easy to see the difference, easy to see if we have the equipment available and what is the operation distribution in time. But let's say we continue with the same pattern. We finish the whole operation and start the next one, which is a totally valid approach, of course. And this completes the manufacturing of five items. Now try to compare this with the table representation of the same data. Actually, the same manufacturing can be executed differently if we start each operation as early as possible. And in this case, we can start the shape operation right away, immediately after cut of the first operation is finished. And right after that, we can start the polish operation for the first item and finally paint. As you can see, in this case, we continue with manufacturing of the first item, progressing with following operations in parallel with cut operation. And then we can continue with the same pattern for the second item to finish it as early as possible. Items are getting ready much faster compared to the previous approach. And then we can continue the same pattern for others and we get this plan to produce the same five items. We can compare this to the original one and that's the point of the chart. We can easily see the distribution of operations, resource availability and so on. So this is a very informative way to represent operations in the system, not only for the manufacturing, but in general. And now let's see how this gun chart is adopted to be used for the database analysis in Ribofish and what are the differences. First, we don't have equipment or operations in the database, but we still need to organize our executions in some way. So we introduce so-called entity in Ribofish because for different processes, that could be something different it could be a user or table or statement hash. So it's called entity and it's defined for each KPI separately. The second difference is it is allowed to have overlaps inside the entity. In the original version of the gun chart, it is not possible to have parallel operations on the same equipment with overlaps, but in Ribofish, it's totally possible. In this case, there will be a little shift. So you still can see which entity it is. In this case, shape but you also see that there is a little mess going on. The third one, it is possible to define titles to be placed inside bars. 
some kind of short additional information can be defined to be placed inside the boxes. And the last one is colors. Of course, for each Gantt KPI, you can define an individual color, but in addition to that, there is so-called gradient. And we can highlight certain entries based on some measurement coming from the same data source. I will show this feature in our KPI later today. So this is a summary of extensions of the Gantt chart in Rubyfish, and now we can switch to the system and see how this works and how to create a Gantt KPI definition from scratch. Okay, let's see how this works. Start the tool, connect to the database, switch to the service level. Uh, let's enable CPU and memory usage. So we will have some context. I'm gonna remove this to have more space in this frame. And now let's see what Gantt KPIs we already have. So I have this Gantt chart group and I have three KPIs defined inside. So this Gantt group name corresponds to the folder name. And we have three of them defined inside. And today let's recreate Delta merges. I'm going to delete it. Let's now reload custom KPI definition. You can see I don't have Delta merges now. And the expensive statements we are going to use as our basis today we see it works somehow, so let's check the expensive statement KPI definition first. Open the YAML file. The first part we are going to skip for now. Variables we also cover a bit later. And what is important for us at the moment is this SQL statement providing all the required data. Let's open the SQL console. We don't need the filter and execute it. So now we can see the data the statement extracts. It actually provides even more data than we need. Uh, those gradient and title columns are not required at the moment, so let's remove them. Okay, and all of those are actually needed. Host and port are obviously required because we work with the HANA instance and Ribofish will filter data for the selected service based on this pair. This is typical for all HANA related custom KPIs, so we will have the same for the Delta merges. Start and stop time are obviously required to be able to plot entries on the chart. Entity used to group the data, this was equipment or operation in standard Gantt. In this case, we group by the user, those labels we have on the left. And the details is a long column and it contains the stuff that we see when we click on entries. When we click here, the hint shows the details. And that's it, it's just six columns. Let's copy the column names. We will have this as our reference. We actually won't need this statement anymore. And now we need to recreate the same structure of data, but based on the different source. So let's see what do we have in M Delta Merge statistics. And we have a lot. So now let's just one by one pick the columns that we need to extract similar data. Host and port, we just take the same. Then we need start and stop times. For the start time, we have this start time column, but for the stop time, we don't. We only have a duration. We will need to calculate the stop time based on the execution time. The next one is entity. For the Delta merge, I would take the table name and probably let's take with schema name, and that's it. We only need to compose the details. The details usually combines a lot of context. Let's pick several columns. I would also have the table name, but with partition ID, might be important delta merge type then. I think motivation might be interesting and success 
and I don't know. So let's take the number of records. This one. So those are the columns that we are going to use, but we need to provide this information in the same format. I mean, we need to have the same column names as we just had for the expensive statements. Host and port are fine, but start time we need to rename as start. The next one is stop time that we need to calculate at seconds. Start time, execution time. This will give us a stop time. Then we have entity. I think let's do a concatenation with schema name. And we also need to rename this to entity. And that's it. We only need to format the details using the rest of the columns. I would repeat the table name, but fully qualified with partition ID. In the first line of the hint, we can use this slash n to move to the next line. Next line, let's have and motivation with no labels. Again, new line, concatenation. And here, this might look confusing, but uh, it is very to format it yourself. And usually it's done step by step. Uh, let's use labels here, success. and records and all of these lines 9 10 and 11 will give us the details let's check oops okay now we have all we need and we are ready to use the statement in the kpi definition So let's maybe copy this and rename to something. The file name is not important. It just needs to have a YAML extension. Okay, now let's take our statement first, replace the old one. Set the correct identification. You need to be very careful here because YAML files are very strict about this. You cannot use the tab character, only spaces are allowed. And I think that might be a problem if you have an empty line inside the multi-line block. Not sure, I just remove it. Now let's check the metadata block. I will go line by line. So the type will be service. That means that our KPI will appear on the service level and not on the host level and Ribofish will filter data based on the corresponding port number. In case we use type host, it will skip the port filter and only filter based on the host name. So delta merges, we want to be on the service level. Subtype is Gantt, we leave it as is. Name, uh, we need to provide a unique name. It will be used internally. The color is in red, green, blue format. Let's make it blue. Uh, red, green, blue. Gradient we skip. Title we also skip for now. Width is basically a width of the bar on the screen. Shift is the number of pixels 
uh, how many pixels of RiboFish will plot the entry in case of overlaps or intersections within the same entity. We will play with this a little bit later. No filter false means that we need to use host and port filter, which is typical for HANA KPIs. But in case we have some KPI related to business or to ABAP player, like ABAP jobs, we will not have those host and port pair. And in this case, we would use no filter true. But in this case, we leave false. Y range defines the vertical range on the screen in percent where this KPI will be drawn. So let's have it on top from 60 to 90 percent. Label delta merges. And description we can delete. So that's it. Variables we also skip for now. Let's see if it works. We need to reload custom KPI definitions. So you see, we don't have delta merges here. Reload. And now we have it. And it is blue. Let's enable it. And you see, I obviously made a mistake during the calculation of the stop time. It's not possible all of the delta merges have the same duration. Yeah, because the execution time is in milliseconds, of course, and we need to convert it to seconds. Once again, there is a hotkey, control K, that can do the same. Okay, we did reload the KPI definition and the corrected statement is loaded now, but we need to hit refresh to extract the correct data. And now this looks much more realistic. Zoom in. We see, but I don't like the color. Let's make it a bit lighter. And actually, let's use this joke from 90s. This would be something cyanish color. Let's use a hotkey this time. Okay. And now we didn't even need to reload the data because this is just a rendering parameter and it works on the client side. And basically that's it. We have a custom KPI definition. We see the table names. We see the CPU spike triggered by this activity. Let's remove the expensive statement. So there are some delta merges going on and we see two tables involved, quite short merges, but you can see some CPU spikes. And this is basically the essential stuff that we needed to define a new custom KPI with type Gantt. So now let's make it a little bit more interesting and use more advanced techniques. For example, if we need to change the range this Gantt KPI occupies on the screen, this one actually looks fine, but let's change this for the sake of the demonstration. We can move it somewhere down on the screen. Reload. And now it is lower on the chart. If we need to adjust it a little more, of course we can. But each time we need to open the YAML file, reload it, and so on. And it would be nice if we can do this in a more convenient way. And that's what can be done with variables. Let's copy this from the expensive statement. Put it here. And actually, let's use the same y1 and 2, but change the defaults to a higher values. And now we can use those y1 and 2 values in the KPI definition. We just need to put a dollar character in front of them when we use. So now what is going to happen on the next KPI reload, Ribofish will take the default values from here and substitute them in the Y range value. So let's try. 
and it just happened. And now we have them in this variables column. And we also can change them here. So we don't need to leave the interface, don't need to reload on the fly. This is much more convenient. We don't need to open YAML file each time. And if I delete everything and hit enter, it will reset to the defaults. And also this is available in this dialog for all the KPIs. Uh, oops, those are leftovers from the previous one, the one we just deleted. We can reset everything to default if we want. So now we only have ours. Okay, and we can enhance a little more and create a filter, for example. For the delta merges, it's nice to have a table filter. By the default, it will be just everything. And let's use it in the statement. Table name, like. We need to use quotes. And now we will be using the substitution of this variable. Let's reload. Just to be sure, refresh. It jumps to the end each time because we have the end time open. So let's put some value there to avoid that. In this case, it will not change with each refresh. And now we'll try to use our table filter. After refresh, we only have delta mergers for this table now. And we can use wildcard. And what I personally like to do is lowercase everything. It will not work like this. We need to lowercase at the table name. Refresh. Okay, now it works. And this is almost everything I would like to have for this KPI. I just would like to add a threshold variable. Threshold, default, I don't know, 10 seconds. And we also need to put it in the filter. Execution time. Exit, threshold, and we need to multiply it 1000 because the threshold is in seconds and the execution time is in milliseconds. Uh, reload. You see, we don't have our threshold because this stuff is cached and we need to reset it. Delete, enter. And now we have the defaults and also the threshold. A refresh. We don't have anything because 10 seconds is too big for this test system. Okay. Let's also put the operation duration somewhere inside the hint because right now we don't see how many seconds this delta match took. As it often required, there is a predefined substitution duration. It is only available inside Gantt chart definition. It will result in human readable duration. Okay, now we have this duration inside the hint. It was nine seconds. Let's put eight. And you can see some stuff disappeared because it was faster, but those are in place. And also what 
can be improved in the legend because in case we have a screenshot of this, we only have part of the delta merges on the screen. And it's not mentioned that some filters were used. So this is not 100% correct. And I prefer to have those important variables included into the label. Both of them, table over threshold seconds. And now we have delta merges, all tables over eight seconds. If I remove this, we have all the data. And the label now correctly describes the chart. This is already quite a powerful KPI that we created, but let's extend it also with titles. Let's define we need titles now. And now we need to provide the title column that will present the data. For example, let's have the partition ID as a title, which might be interesting. It is a good idea to cast this to Varchar. Let's check if it works. And now we have some title. You can see that the delta merge was on the fourth partition. By the way, I didn't show how the shift works. This parameter controls how many pixels off the bar would be in case of overlaps. Let's make it the same eight pixels at the width of the bar. This actually looks nice. And this might be a good idea for delta merges, but I prefer to have a little visual mess in such cases. So it's gonna be clear that there is some intersection going on. I just like this to be obvious. If there is not enough space, the title is not shown. But if you zoom in, there it is. And if we check the other table, we have the partition ID zero, which means the table is not partitioned. So let's adjust the definition to skip the title in such cases. So let's use map whenever we have partition ID zero. Let's have it empty. And for all the others, we will have the partition ID number. So if the partition ID is zero, which is usually the case, we will not have the title at all to avoid excessive information on screen. Okay, it is working. Let's see if it still works for the partitioned one. Yeah, for those, we still have the partition ID numbers. So we can put as complex SQL expression as we need to, to generate titles. We just need to keep the result short and varchar. And the last feature is gradient. So if we need this, we can also take the gradient definition Let's make it true. And this gradient two, it defines the target color of the gradient. So bars with higher gradient values will have this color and low values will have the base color. And now we need to define a column for this. For delta mergers, let's take the merge delta record. It should be integer and rename it as gradient. Mm, 
Now let's see how this works. And now we see those have the same base color and those appear to be white. That means they have a very high value in these merged records and those have very little number of rows merged. Let me change the period because this gradient color is recalculated based on the, all the entries we have inside the period. And that's basically the same. And this happens because here we have over a million rows merged. And for those, we have a negative one because that was a sparse merge, meaning the recompression. And here, that was a regular delta merge. And because we have such a big difference between them, we don't see any intermediate colors. So let's get rid of those. And now we have some kind of distribution here. This one has the lowest number of records merged. This one has a higher number. This one, something in between. And they have closed number of records because the table is hash partitioned and has a very even records distribution. But still we can see some difference in colors. And this might be useful because we basically have like another dimension on the screen. And we can see not only the difference in duration, but in something else like number of records, memory usage, or something like that. So this is it. I think I will include this custom KPI definition in the build. I will probably extend it a little bit with uh, sys statistics data because this version only has the online data. So I will union this with the history. And this is it, a decent custom KPI that uses all the currently available features for the gun chart. Have fun. And I almost forgot to pay attention to what is actually going on in the system and what can we see having this new custom KPI we just created. So let's step back a little and see what is going on actually. As I already mentioned many times, the expensive statement KPI is extremely useful in database analysis. So let's switch it on. So we can correlate CPU and memory activity to the different stuff going on in the system. And we see that CPU usage and other CPU spikes here are related to those statements executed in the system. And sometimes there are additional spikes of the CPU related to something else. And in this case, this is Delta Match. This is manual heap allocators collector table. But in the end, so the statement is a procedure generating data. The memory grows with the execution. And in the end, there is a massive delta image executed in parallel for different partitions of this table. And the table name is system orders, the same table that is used in this procedure. So when the statement finished, after a little gap, the delta merge kicked in, which is exactly what we would expect. And we can easily see how those operations are distributed in time. And this is exactly the point of the gun chart. We can literally see how those operations are distributed in time, what is executed in parallel, what is done sequentially, and so on. We see the delta merge triggered after the statement. Three partitions are merging in parallel. Number four started right after the number one. And this might give us some important inputs on delta mergers operation on this table because it obviously contributes to the CPU and memory consumption. And after a little time, there is something like a second stage of the delta merge. That was a regular one, type merge. And those are sparse table optimization. And this might be very important. And in parallel, there is a decrease in memory between merges, which is not a part of the procedure or merges. It is something else. I think in this case, a garbage collection. So let's compare this with the first execution. 
The procedure generates the same amount of data, but unlike the second one, it triggers intermediate commits. And we see it overlaps a little, but now we can adjust online. And maybe let's filter only for our table. So, yeah, now we see those intermediate commits result in parallel merges. Different partitions again contribute to CPU consumption executed from time to time. And then at some point, a little different one, which is sparse. And after the procedure finish, there is a gap and the final match. And that gives us the understanding how the stuff is executed, how it's related, what is the impact of different operations. For example, there was a data deletion. This is the deletion itself and two stages of the delta merge. Merge and sparse. Each of them results in memory decrease. And in case we want to get more details on the memory consumption, we can check the components drill down. So we can see that most of the decrease was in the system component. And also some decrease in column store. Let's change the scale. So this gives us quite interesting details on memory distribution. And after those executions, we have a memory decrease with some delay. After merges also. In the system component. And again, if we need to, we can go deeper. I will limit the period because I will extract very detailed information on memory on allocator level. Let's disable the aggregated one. And now reload. So now we can see that this decrease in memory usage is related to this allocator, which is log manager. And it was not related to the procedure or delta merges. This is something else executed by HANA internally. And if we have some concerns, we can check the details of this allocator in SAP nodes or keep an eye on it. But we see that that's a lot going on, except the procedure itself and delta merges. So this GAN stuff is extremely powerful, extremely flexible. It does not have to be related to the internal HANA activities, it could be ABAP jobs, BW loads, etc. I hope you will find application for this in your work and see you in the upcoming videos.